Okay, so I'm Ben Mitchell. I'm a independent type designer based in Brighton, UK, um, and I focus mainly on Southeast Asian writing systems, um, but I also do Latin projects for branding branding companies, uh, branding projects. Um, so I studied in Reading four years ago, five years ago, something like that. Um, I'm really happy to be back. I think for the scripts that I work on, it's incredibly nice to see um, things like Burmese starting to enter into the market because for a very long time um, the situation has been very difficult in Burma and it's great to see kind of progress happening which is including more inquiries coming through to do with Burmese. Um, I think it is, I think some of these scripts can be very, very technical to engineer to get them working on different computers. A lot of platforms don't support things like Burmese, and so there's all kinds of difficulties that you have to be aware of and try and learn from as many people as possible. It's one of the reasons I like coming to these conferences to get talking to people. How did you do that? How did you do that? How do we get this working? Um, I think, what was the second part of the question? How important is it still to just make aesthetically pleasing visual forms? That's, yeah, that's definitely an important part of it. I, I don't think I'd be happy if I made an ugly typeface. Um, I try to do my best by looking at the different kinds of um, expressions of the script. When I, I mean, I'm often visiting Southeast Asia and looking for particular research material to inform my practice. Um, I think different people work in different ways. I mean, for me, I don't get too involved in the technical side of it because that's more a production side thing. Foundries will take care of that. Um, but obviously, I need to work with them, and so I need to understand the issues that they're that they're dealing with. Um, it, yeah, it, it's very variable. I think both sides are important. I think, um, for example, with Burmese, it's taken us a couple of years of part-time work to figure out how to make it all work. Uh, we're not still quite done yet. Um, but it's getting there, and I think I do need to have an appreciation of that, otherwise I'm not going to be able to do a design that's going to work on any system, um, or I'm not going to be able to work with people who are doing the engineering for that. Um, but for me, personally, I, I prefer to concentrate on the shapes, the, the drawing. That's a good question, because definitely things like the Glyph software can't support all scripts from the start, so they've got to be selective. Okay, we're going to support Latin to start with, and then add Greek and Cyrillic, and then maybe Arabic, and then take it from there. You can't expect them to implement everything from the word go when there's a handful of people working for them, and they're a small company. Um, but they're very receptive to comments that I have, and I've been talking to Gil yesterday about getting implementation for Lao set up and working. Um, and so I think some companies are very good at kind of, okay, we can't do everything now, but we'll talk to people and see what's going to be needed for the future and think about the best way to implement that. Other software developers not so interested. Um, things like InDesign doesn't support Burmese Unicode, and so you have real difficulties or impossibilities when you're trying to do anything in Burmese script. Um, because the letters come out in the wrong order on the screen, and so that's not readable. What are you going to do? You're going to use something else. Um, but from Adobe's side, obviously, they don't have a majority of users who need to use Burmese, and so in their business interests, they've got to focus on where the market is, and okay, maybe other scripts are more important for them to implement first. Um, so it's a slow process for the, the kind of the bigger companies, um, I think. They want to do these things, but product teams um, don't always understand the need for minority user groups. Um, things like Firefox are doing very well at supporting things like that. Obviously, the internet is huge all around the world, and so companies who develop web browsers want to try and make sure that they can be used in all these places. Um, and so that's a better place to start and actually we do a lot of our testing using Firefox because actually that's the one system we know is reliable. Um, but even within those things there are parts of Burmese that you won't get working or parts that 
the authorities don't know about like Sanskrit implementation for Burmese. There's only a few people in the world who understand how Burmese works for Sanskrit. Um, and so I've had to consult with them to figure it out and made recommendations to people in Unicode or at Microsoft about how these scripts need to work for other non-majority groups within Burma. And so it's, it's kind of, yeah, fractal in a way that you've got branches of branches of branches happening and you can't expect them all to work from the start because there's not enough people using it or knowing about it. Um, but things are definitely advancing. Yeah, things are, things are getting better for Burmese. In my experience, looking at the Southeast Asian writing systems, okay, they all came from the same root. And so obviously there's something that makes people want to impart their own individuality or their culture on the writing system because they've diversified into all these different things. So in Southeast Asia today, there's scores of writing systems, not just the majority ones, but non minority ones or religious ones or who knows what. Um, and so people do like to make a writing system and make it theirs. Maybe it's because the language sounds in a particular group different. They need to add other letters or change the shapes of letters or stuff. But there's definitely something about people in a particular group like particular shapes. And I think that was quite an interesting thing when I could realise it and I could see what happened to Balava script after it arrived in Thailand and Southeast Asia and kind of diversified in all these different ways according to culture and identity and stuff. Um, so there's definitely something that people are actually very proud of their script and they want to make it theirs and they want to kind of keep it theirs. In today's global society, I think, okay, it's not necessary for everybody to be able to have Burmese or Thai fonts implemented on their screens, but I don't think there's any harm in having fonts that can cover all of these different writing systems. I mean, okay, you want to keep file sizes down and not include everything in every font, um, but for different user groups, like with, with a brand like Microsoft, who need to be in markets in lots of different places with using different scripts, I think it has become a more global, globally relevant thing to include thinking about all the different people around the world when making type and implementing it. That's a really nice way to put it, yeah. Like I'm looking at as much of the background to a script as I can find. I'm making lots of research trips to, to Southeast Asia these days. Um, I studied anthropology at university, I studied philosophy, so I'm kind of questioning how do we know things, how do we know that what we know is right, um, how do we get an understanding of people who are very different to us without kind of categorising them in the terms that we have already. Um, and so yeah, I think that's a really nice way to put it, that I'm trying to approach type design from the inside context rather than going okay well I'm going to look at this and okay it looks a bit like a Latin letter so I'm going to put this on it that's probably not the best approach and yeah so I'm trying to contextualize things all the way I'm probably making assumptions I'm not even aware of but you know <laughs> you do your best <laughs> it's a difficult question I think there's maybe different layers to it because some things can become very trendy for a short time and then disappear again. Whereas I think with the Thai loopless style, I don't think that's a trend. I think that's kind of a more a solid movement where things are changing and it's going to be kind of a more historical thing than a trend for a few years. Um, but then throughout history, the, the different ways that languages are represented does swing from one side to another and then back again in whichever script you're looking at there are kind of preferences that last for a hundred years, couple of hundred years and then swing back the other way you get periods of conservatism, periods of fast development and new technologies and stuff happening. Um, I think it's always in flux, I don't think there's any particular way you can say well this is how Thai script looks, this is how Latin script looks 
um, like with Latin things like when bold came in, when italics came in and how people use them, that has changed ever since they started being used um, and will continue to change. So who knows what we'll be reading in a hundred years. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's got to be. <laughs> um, I started thinking maybe international type design. Um, People sometimes say world scripts. I don't. I don't know what the, the best phrase would be, but non-Latin seems to me to push what we're talking about into a niche. It seems to push it into kind of a subset of type design where it's not, because normally what we're talking about in type design is Latin, and that's the subset of global written communication and so I'd really like to see us stop using the word non-Latin so that we can think actually Latin is a small part we need to think about the whole thing and not kind of whether one part is bigger than another part or not that's not so relevant if we if we see the whole thing all together then we can learn I mean things are applic applicable across all of the different scripts so as type designers we can take advantage of that yeah I, I don't like non-Latin too much now <laughs>